Hey guys, thanks for joining the Average Waterfowlers podcast. On today's episode, my brother and I hang out with Ben Potter from Can Outdoors. You've seen his work, uh, Dr. Duck, and more recently, 25 Horse on Sigga's websites and Yeti's website. Um, we have an awesome time chatting with him, and we talk about a myriad of different things from the difference in duck hunting cultures from the west coast to the southeast. We talk about his experience going out with guys and hunting elk in the mountains, um, and and just hang out and get to know the guy. Super thankful uh, for his time. He was an awesome guest. Took time away from his family the day before Thanksgiving to hang out with us and uh, we couldn't have had a better time. There is a little bit of like kind of audio visual glitchiness um, from the connection that we had. I tried to clean it up as best I can, but when it comes to editing, I'm no Ben Potter. All right, welcome to the Average Waterfowlers. Today we have Ben Potter on from Canna Outdoors. Do you prefer Benjamin or Ben? Uh, ben, is, ben is fine. Ben is fine, yeah. all right, cool, yeah. all right. So, if you guys uh, have seen any of the content on uh, Sitka's page or, or Yeti's um, websites, Ben has some awesome, awesome work, and he just released 25 Horse, which is yeah. phenomenal, dude. I awesome. love that. And if you guys haven't seen it, you got to go to the Sitka website or to the Canna website, check it out, and use headphones. Like, the layering, the audio that you had on that uh, is so sick. Uh, like, it just, I, to me, it just really captures kind of like the Delta feel that Arkansas has in it. Uh, and then layering the mo the motors and the, the the duck calls on top of that. Yeah, I don't know, man. It just hit something for me that I was, like, I so fired up about. That's cool to hear. I mean, it, it truly was layers upon layers of sounds. Cause that's, that was the experience. So, you know, I, last year, you know, last season was uh, my first time in, in the timber. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then the second year we, I heard, that's when I first heard about the boat races. And so our original plan was to d make a film about the boat racing that goes down, you know, on opening weekend. And then uh, I think it was, I don't know, two, three months before opening day, uh, new, new regs came out and they outlawed boat racing. Right. <laughs> or like I had this brilliant, you know, storyline built out for Sitka and Yeti and and I was we're super stoked to make this film called Boat Race and uh and then all of a sudden we're like, "Oh, this is illegal." And uh so I guess we're not making that movie. But, you know, it still it still happens. It's I mean, it, it, to a degree. It's it's uh once those guys get down the line enough, I mean, it's it got it was in, it got interesting and got a little a little sketchy, but it was great. <laughs> and uh, but when you're in that environment, like the smoke and the sounds and the LED lights, and um, you know, I had a, a guy, one of my guys shooting in a boat. This guy named Mather who does works with me sometimes, and and, uh, and then I was flying a drone and looking down, it was just like this mess. It looked like a I don't even know, like. There was orange and pink and red and blue lights and smoke. And it was just like, <laughs> what is going on down there? You know, and uh, it, it looked like a war zone, you know, and <laughs> it really, it really is. And, um, and so I don't know, there was just so much sounds and that, you know, when I was going through all our footage and all our content, my computer like couldn't handle how many layers of sound I was doing. I, I mean, so I would like wow. literally export a piece and, you know. I wish I could afford a Mac Pro, but at this point, our our office is, uh, you know, spending money in other directions, I guess. But uh, yeah, well, you got like an eighty five thousand dollar camera, so yeah, that that's that's where the money is going, right? <laughs> We're like, we know the end result will work, and we'll just suffer through uh, not being able to render everything in, in the moment. But um, it's it's all good. Yeah, so it's kind of like an interesting thing, and that's something I wanted to. Like po like poke into a little bit with you is that, yeah, Arkansas has like this really kind of historic duck hunting culture, right? And you are from California, correct? Right, right. yeah. And, and clearly, you're in California right now. You're at your uh, family's house, yep. and yep. clearly, there's some duck hunting culture going on in California. Yeah, uh, just from you know what I've seen, and then the decoys behind you. Yeah. Um, what was it, what's it like? What's, 
What are the two right. worlds like in comparison? Wow. Well, we could talk about that all night, but it's it's uh so th- this when I was in high school, this was my used to be my room, and uh, and now it's a decoy lair. As you can see. <laughs> and uh, so my dad's a really big uh, decoy wooden, the original decoy collectors, and he's like knows every carver throughout you know that has been or a big deal. So all these are different. Uh, birds from all over the states, but a lot of these are from California carvers, you know, throughout, uh, you know, California. And, and uh, it's funny because again, when I was out in the, in the South, you know, and I, and I spent quite a bit of time out there the last couple of seasons, um, you guys were like, you, you hunt ducks in California? And you're like, wow, really? Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there is a crap ton of duck hunting in California. And uh, I even get surprised when I see guys, you know, through like Instagram from, LA or you know way down south hunting ducks I'm like what really because I you know so I'm I'm originally from the East Bay area and uh so we're we're kind of like where I grew up hunting was uh the Sacramento Valley and it's really similar to Arkansas actually we're the we're the second or third largest rice growing you know state and uh I think I think we're third to Texas and then Arkansas is number one and um so we have a real similar setup you have the rice the rice, you know, blinds and the spec hunting. And, you know, uh, actually this morning we were out hunting on a rice blind and, uh, and, um, yeah, so it's, it's really similar in that way. Obviously we don't have the timber. So timber is like something that I think I've seen. And then it's funny how things like Instagram, social media kind of open your eyes to like the big, this is the whole of waterfowl hunting is, is so much to it. You know, I, you know things like uh, the guys that hunt on the on the big water on the in the off the coast. You know for eiders and stuff. I, it's, I've never done that, right. and I know they do it out in the bay in San Francisco Bay, and guys hunt for those. You know on the Brant, and it's just I always kind of I don't know puddle ducks, and you know those have been my my deal. Uh, but some guys get really into divers. I I don't understand that, but that's all right. You know that's yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, for me it was always like nope, let it go. You know and and uh, but. It's cool to see guys are, that are really passionate about certain types of ducks, you know, and and uh, so California, I mean, if you go to the northern end of the state, it's like, you, you know, it, it feels like uh, Oregon or, I mean, it basically is, you know, and uh, just no one and we would pull into a refuge and it'd be two trucks, you know, you go into the middle part of the state and there'll be 400 trucks getting ready to go into hunt, you know, and it's just a mess and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of hunters in the state and uh and it, yeah so that's good and bad but you know um it's i love getting i love you know growing up here it's just always gonna be on my home turf you know for duck hunting but i love going and experiencing other states and i think arkansas has really i mean it's there's something very rich about in all of the south you know of uh the the, the waterfowl culture that's there mm-hmm. it's like it, you feel uh i, I guess you kind of i kind of feel like it almost feels like you're going to where it started, right. even though maybe it didn't start. I mean, who knows, you know, yeah. um, but, uh, Imagine people started killing ducks whenever they saw ducks. Like it yeah. probably started all over the place. Right. Right. Yeah. I was reading something about the history of Thanksgiving the other day and they talked about the settlers going out the foul, you know, and I was right. like, well, there you go. they're out shooting ducks with whatever rifles, you know, on a, on a lake or something. Right. You know? John Smith was captured. Waterfowl hunting. Was oh, no way. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You know, the Pocahontas guy? Yeah. I didn't okay. know that. Look at you come here with some, yeah. some history. Hey, I was a history major. I did something in college. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was. but Right on. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, to answer your question, I don't know where to start with that. I mean, it's just California waterfowl hunting is it's diverse. There's a lot of different uh, pockets of guys that are, get into the honkers way up north. Mm-hmm. Real good. I mean, there's kind of where I live. I live in Central Coast, California, so we're about 10 minutes from the ocean, halfway between L.A. and San Francisco, a little town called San Luis Obispo. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, we don't live necessarily close to waterfowl hunting, but uh, where, where I usually go, my local area, I guess you'd call it, it's a, called the grasslands, and, and it's mostly teal and um, widgeon and uh, pintail a few, a few mallards here and there, but, um, it might not be, uh, it's definitely not what you get in the South, you know? Right. And so, um, seeing birds fall through uh, a hole in the timber was, 
you know, mind blowing for me when I first experienced it. You know, and and, uh, and I don't think I've still. I don't think I wouldn't say I've still experienced like the hundred, hundred, you know, two hundred birds pouring in right. those those clips I see every once in a while, and I'm like, oh man, that's what we were after with our film with Twenty Five Horse. But you know, it's hunting, yeah, and you do what sure. you can. You, you do your best, and and uh, I mean, we I probably spent almost thirty days in the timber last year. And uh, it was tough, man. We got our butts kicked a lot. And, yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, I think a lot of guys can appreciate what you do get. And, you know, you congratulate the guys that do get to see it, you know. And yeah. uh, yeah. so. If it makes you feel any better, we live in the South, and I've never seen 100 or 200 birds pouring through the timber. So I, I've seen it off the river. I've seen it off the Mississippi. Oh. Yeah, like right on top of the Mississippi. But that wasn't like a true okay. timber hole, was it? That no, was, I, was, I was just a back channel Mississippi uh, River hunt. Okay. Yeah. Huh. That I've only seen it once. So. Yeah. Oh, uh, see, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I was like, you know, guys just talk about it. You know how we get, you get that one hunt stuck in your mind, and you just kind of hit it on replay. And you're like, oh yeah, you got to come hunt with me. We'll we'll get them doing this. Yeah. And it's yeah. like that happened one time for you, and you think you're gonna. Whatever, yeah. buddy, and, and gonna have a game. Twenty turns to fifty real quick, and fifty turns to a hundred real quick. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of that going on yeah. for sure. There was one one dude, and I, I believe him. He uh, a friend of a friend, and uh, he's out of a uh, Stuttgart or or maybe South, and uh, in Arkansas. And he was like, "Man, one time we were we were hunting, and and uh, we're walking through the woods, and we could hear all these ducks, and we started walk just walking, and all of a sudden we were just they were." all these ducks were feeding on dry ground in the timber, like thousands, and they were kicking them up and they would just kind of keep rolling over themselves, like, you know, keep getting up and they would even shoot a few and then they would just land a little farther and walk up on them, shoot a few, and land a little farther. I believe that. And I was like, that's got to be a, it's just a trip, you know, and, and I don't think the dude's blowing smoke, you know, and I mean, make, make, California too. could have been screwing with me, but, uh, it sounded awesome, nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think I think that those definitely happen, but I think it's yeah. like it's pretty rare, you know. Yeah. It's and uh, I, I think it's also like one of those things like you got to be out there almost your whole life to really experience something yeah. that special. Like you know, we talked to our farmer that that like we lease from, yeah, and like he keeps going back to like a single story, okay, you know where yeah. the birds were coming in so thick they were landing so close that it was yeah. throwing water on his glasses he couldn't see yeah. you know yeah. but like that's his only story you know yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. He's, he's like 60 something years old so and that happened when he was like 16 and he had just hit <laughs> yeah and uh, when no one was in the timber there was no pressure or whatever uh, you know yeah. yeah so but you uh your your movies like capture the soul of that a little bit like you're the first guy um i'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass but appreciate it i uh i've seen like you know like sick has done a really great job of finding guys like you to, to produce mm -hmm. content and they were doing it in like western hunting for a while right and so i was seeing all this stuff coming in for sheep hunting and elk hunting Right. That was just killer, right? And then right, for a right. long time, because like Sea uh, Cat or whatever that dude, right? Yeah. Like he does yeah. a lot of that stuff, and he, uh -huh. him, and like the Montana Wild guys were making some really right. good stuff in the back in the day. But no right. one was doing it in duck hunting. Like you could like watch the Duck Commander videos or whatever, but they didn't have like that richness that yeah. some of these other guys' content had, and. When you came out and produced that stuff, the initial stuff that you had on the website, I was like, finally, this is it. Like, this is getting to, to me, what duck hunting is and can be. Yeah. And like, I feel like duck hunting is finally catching up a little bit from not only a content side, but from like a, you know, like a supply side on like the actual the actual products that we have access to now with like yeah. with companies like that you're re you're representing yeah well, absolutely I yeah think. it's 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 cool to, it's it i mean it's, it's a cool time to be a duck hunter i mean yeah. i think that's just it's it uh, i was gonna i was gonna say about 25 horse is that yeah i think you were able to capture something about arkansas that you can't really get anywhere else because 
Like I, I hunt across the river in Mississippi a lot. I hunt in Louisiana a little bit. I've seen a lot of Louisiana. I haven't seen much of Texas. And um, like if you were if you were not to have said anything about Arkansas, I would have just the music and where you guys were. You were able to capture what I've seen of Arkansas. And I was like, wow. oh, that's definitely Arkansas. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think that like if you can bring somebody to a place without telling them where you where you are mm. i think you've done something oh that's cool yeah which is really cool yeah. yeah right on i mean it's yeah it's kind of funny coming from the i think honestly i think it's helpful coming from the outside in because everything is if you grow up in that world um there's a lot of things that you just do and that you just the way you live or the way you talk or the way you uh hunt ducks um you you water plot them and that's what you do and for me coming from the outside it's like everything is brand new and it's super fresh everything is for the first time for me and so um i mean 25 horse was the second time capturing a bit of the timber I and mean, if, if you guys happen to have seen uh, the doctor original dr duck film you know we got in the timber we did one trip and um and it just didn't really pan out a whole lot we we should we shot a handful but um you know how it always goes oh we should be that in that hole right over there we're 100 yards off the x or and uh we saw him come through the timber a bit uh but so 25 horse i kind of had it was like my second time getting after you know the timber and really devoting a lot of time to it versus just one one trip but it's still that like kind of shocking off like wow this is just this is not my world that i grew up got trained in and um i mean even just being at the hotel you know, uh, the night before we meet up with the guys who are at the boat launch, we would just, I mean, everyone there, you know, it's just like cool getting to meet people. And you can tell that by the way they look at us, they're like, you are not from here, you know. <laughs> I didn't have to say anything. Like, they haven't even heard me talk yet. And they just, they, they just giving me these looks like, are you lost, you know? And like, uh, and then showing up at the boat ramp, I mean, it's great. I just love the intensity and, and the guys that, I just got a lot of respect, I think, for the guys that, get after the timber because that's brutal out there i mean it's by far i think the most brutal uh, duck hunting environment you can get in i mean everything is after you i mean we were we killed cotton mouse hanging off true branches like we're you know feet from our head you know i mean the some of these thorns you've seen them i mean coming off these trees i mean if you if you're bombing through the timber and you you know whatever your arm hits that i mean you, you're gonna i don't know what you're gonna yeah. cut yourself bad and uh and so I, I don't know. I just have a lot of respect for the guys that everyone I met along the way that we like hunted with or um, met out in the timber. I mean, even, you know, did opening weekend up in the north and because uh, that's where the water was at the time. And and, uh, you know, I guess there's a tradition, you know, at this place we were hunting. I don't know if I'm allowed to say where it was, but so I won't. Um, but you probably know where it is. But anyway. Uh, you know, they, there's a tradition there, an old tradition that if someone, an old timer rolls into the hole and you're already set up there, like you, you invite them to hunt with you no matter what. That's tradition, you know. Right. And I'm just thinking of times in California where it's it's a, it's a mad race, the same thing, but we're just on foot or on a bike or, right. you know, trying to get a spot and guys will just cuss each other out. And I like to just walk up to guys and say, where are you going to hunt? You know, I'm, I'm out here to enjoy myself. And so you tell me where you want to go. I'm not going to fight, you know, like, uh, and, uh, and I don't know, that's just, and, and then guys will mellow out and, oh, okay, that was, was, I'm going to hunt here. All right, cool. I'm going to go over there. And, uh, but in the timber, it's cool to see that similar, I don't, there was, and it happened. We were there, this, this guy, old timer rolled in a boat. I mean, I, the guy had to be 70 and he's like, mind if I hunt with you boys? Or Dennis, uh, Dr. Duck, you know. Yeah, man, join us. And it just so all of a sudden in our holes, like 15 guys were like, wow, okay, this is going to get interesting, you know? And uh, it definitely made it challenging uh, with my goal of, of uh, you know, you trying to somewhat control the scene for the film. And, um, but I think, you know, to kind of get at what you're saying, it's, you know, it's, it's really cool and honor to hear that. And I, I think it just kind of comes because it's not my world. And, um, you know, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a photographer. And I think I had a vision for wanting to capture the intensity of the timber. So at first we wanted to capture the boat racing of the timber, mm -hmm. but since that was illegal and we want to definitely want to 
pay respect to the, you know, the um, fishing game who gave us permits to film. You know, I don't want to go turn around and make a film about something that's illegal. And <laughs> I would doubt they wouldn't appreciate that. No. Uh, but it, I think you can't avoid the intensity and the uh, the attention that these guys put into their boats and then their motors and um, there's all these little subtleties that I think a guy, you know, I think of my my friend Bubba who lives in in uh, in Arkansas, you know, he was in the film and uh, you know he just started spouting off all this stuff. I think he was getting really annoyed when I was interviewing him. I said, hey, tell me about the engines, you know. Tell me about like all the work he's like. Oh man, well you can do this, you can do that, you can. Da, 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 da. He was just kind of like talking to me like I'm I'm stupid. I don't know anything about it, and it was true. I don't. And then I ended up. That was one of my favorite parts for me to edit in the film because it's like you can sit. For me, I knew how annoyed he was with me when he <laughs> not that stuff. And to him, it's just common sense, you know, yeah. like what you what you do to get that much more speed out in the timber, and um, and so. Anyway, yeah, it's it's cool to get to tell. It's an honor to get to tell the story because it's it's a rich and deep, you know, old tradition of hunting the timber. And I, I feel a little, you know, I guess you you feel a little like uh, you just want people to know that that it's a it's an honor because you're not. I'm from California, and with uh, probably about ninety five percent of the country hates California, so except those who live here. And uh, and I get it, you know, I get it. I I understand your gripe, but. Um, Northern California. What are you talking about, man? I, I mean, it's, it's a little bit. This state's very, very diverse. That's all I got to say about yeah. that. It, there's, a, there's, you'll find just about everything here in California. And if you, and what gets highlighted in the media is one thing, and what the majority of the people live here is another thing. So, um, but you know, we're all used to that at this point. <laughs> and all those good times. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the film. Yeah, it's yeah, I'm I'm stoked on it. I'm I'm glad to see a lot of people enjoying it and getting around and you know, it's 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 a, I've been getting a lot of messages. You guys just stoked and just like what you guys are saying and thank you for making this. And that I mean, at the end of the day, it's like you know, I'm stoked to make my clients happy and and it, you know, that's that's an honor in itself, but when I when I hear from the guys that live it and breathe it, I mean, that's that's it. You know, like that's that's my goal. It's like if I can if I can make them happy and them feel like I've done justice to what their passion is, yeah. I just think there's a better reward, you know, than that. And and so, yeah, it's cool. Um, well, and yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, man. Um, I I kind of want to jump to some of the other work you've done too because I think you've done like I'm a huge waterfowl. I'm a I'm a I'm a duck hunter, right? Like that's my that, that's my thing, but. Um, up until 25 horse, like I loved tendoys too. Oh, and, awesome. uh, and so it's kind of cool to, um, to see that. And that my, the, the thing that I liked about it is that it had like a huge conservation tone to it. And, uh, -huh. uh, and that was a, that was a pretty rad film. What was it like going from like filming duck hunting to climbing mountains and yeah. chasing sheep? So, for that? yeah, Tendoys is a is it's a special one, man, because it's kind of our first stab at big game. And like you said earlier, that Sick has got you know a lot of really good, talented people that are like really immersed in the big game. You know, hunting the doll sheep, hunting you know in the Northwest Territories, and just doing awesome work. And right. and so yeah. stepping into um, you know when when we were first having the conversations about making a film about Tendoys, um, it's actually pretty, you know, comical because, you know, we were in the middle of a conversation planning out some waterfowl work with Sitka mm -hmm. and, um, they brought up, you know, out of the blue, they're like, Hey, let's talk about big game. What, what are you guys thinking? And I was like, well, I have, you know, just learned about this hunt and, uh, learned about this, this special conservation hunt where they were going to open up this season. And, you know, all I knew about sheep hunting was, it's expensive and it's hard and it's, there's only a handful of guys that do it. Yeah. And when, uh, and I, it was, uh, it's really funny that the, uh, owner of, of Sitka, this guy, Jonathan Hart, um, you know, awesome guy. And he, I was like, yeah, we're, we're doing this sheep film. And he's like, uh, all he had to say was say to me was, man, that's a tough crowd. And I was like, Oh, great. <laughs> well, I'm 
never done that, and you know, I'm I'm not part of that crowd. And so, man, I hope I can I can do this. And and it just you know, at the end of the day, you just you immerse yourself, you put yourself in it, and you you uh, do your thing. You do what you what I what catches my eye. Mm-hmm. And that was similar thing to what we're talking about with Timber. You know, Sicker was like, we want we think it'll be a great perspective having someone outside of the the box looking in on it and telling us this conservation. What do you how do you see this conservation story? plan out and um the more i got into it um we realized it was much a deeper story than we thought it was you know at first we thought this is just a story about one hunt and we're going to tell them how they're going to they're trying to remove this herd and it's cool they're opening it they could go in with helicopters and kill them all and let the you know other animals eat them but that in itself is not the best um use of the animal and uh mm-hmm. so the, it's really cool though, the fishing game opened this up for hunters and so over the counter i think it was um 500 bucks for out of state 125 bucks for re- residents and so i mean we met guys from all over uh really? and, and and it was discouraging man it was uh the unit was not too big and we just went straight to the top you know we're up over ten thousand, and um so that i was dying i drove from california so uh, well, I think we're about 250 feet over sea level. Uh, and then I was up over 10,000. I was straight dying. And uh, I think every guy on the trip that was looking at me like, oh, man, what did we why did we bring him? You know, and, so me, me and my uh, my good friend, Joel, who works for me, um, he you know, we got after it to tell the story. And we just kept running into hunters every time we'd see a sheep. There was another hunter looking at that same sheep. And then bumping it, and then there was guys on razors running on these ridges they shouldn't have been running on, and so it was really a discouraging. You're like, this isn't going to happen. Like, what story do I have to tell here? Except we went hiking, you know, and glassed some sheep, and uh, and and that's the challenging thing. For I have a lot of respect for guys that, that do just big game because you, I mean, when that moment happens, like you need to be on. You know, with duck hunting, you can mess a flock up and. And then uh, get another chance. But man, with big game, like you might hike 100 miles and have seriously 30 seconds to make it happen. Right. And uh, and so it's and it's it's tough. So day three, we were just basically going to hunt half a day, and we scouted for two days, and then we hunted for for three days. And on day three, we were we we're just working this ridge line, looking for the sheep, glassing, and then um, my uh, my so you know my assistant photographer spotted the sheep you know he's like right there and uh and we saw one sheep and then as these guys started making the stock turned out there were two sheep and i was across the ridge filming bird's eye view and uh i was like crap this is this isn't gonna happen like we're gonna bust the other sheep that's closer sure enough they did and then one of the sheep went about 200 yards and laid down and then i'm just rolling on the sheep you know just sitting across the ridge thinking well at least i got some sheep footage you know and uh, and then all of a sudden, in the corner of my frame, I see this guy Tony bust through the, the trees. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's on! Like this is happening. <laughs> like couldn't believe it. And um, it's just phenomenal the way it, it panned out. Um, and then getting to you know connect with Wild Sheep Foundation, you know, just super great guys. You know, that love the work that they're doing. Um, and, you know, and I just learned about how they're collaborating with uh, different universities. Uh, they're collaborating with the Fish and Game. And so you don't usually see this kind of collaboration on an issue. It's usually like one somebody's taking it on. They're all kind of maybe even competing in, in a sense. But this was a cool thing to see that I thought the teamwork, um, even hunters are part of that equation of working together. And um, so, I mean, it was it was a cool a cool film to uh, to get after and, and sick of loved it i mean it seemed like a lot of uh sheep hunters loved it you know mm-hmm. thank the lord you know i didn't know if that was going to happen and uh and uh, you know it was exciting for us um and then it let and now it's now we're doing more big games so it's it's uh putting us in that world even all the more and and i love it you know it's different in waterfowl 100 percent different yeah. um but it's 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 special and it's it's uh it's it's cool to immerse myself into all these different you know passions you know for the outdoors and so yeah i saw because i follow you on instagram and uh Mm -hmm. did i see were you doing something with randy newberg over in september yes sir yeah um 
So um, we're working on a, a film right now that, um, and it's it's off. It's going to be awesome. Um, it's a, a longer uh, style film, and it. Um, I don't know how much I can say. Let me think. I can say some because I'm posting about it. Um, uh, you know, but so the film, um, it's a it's an elk elk hunting film about. Uh, we're following this guy named Corey Jacobson, yeah. uh, and if you've heard of him, yeah, and so uh, amazing oh, wow. dude that lives up in Boise, uh, Idaho, and uh, just a phenomenal elk caller. Like he just commands those animals. Like, um, and it's it's been amazing to, to watch him and his, you know, throughout the whole season. So I've basically uh, been following him all of September, his whole elk season, just capturing his his. Uh, you know, everything that happens. And, um, part of that season was, um, he got invited by Randy to be on one of Randy's episodes. And, um, so we went down. So I was like, you know, where Corey is, that's where I am. And, you know, we were down in New Mexico and, uh, met, I'd never met Randy before. And, and, uh, but super fun getting to meet him and his film guy and, um, the dude named Marcus and, you know, really cool dude as well. And, um, and man, we got our butts straight kicked in New Mexico. <laughs> it was we we hiked. Um, I can't even remember at this point. I think 114 miles in seven days, and um, so we were. It was it was brutal. And then the the terrain is like, you know, it's like lava rock and just shit, and like it's stuck. It's just <laughs> dead trees. You at moments you're like, where I'm in hell. I get walking through hell with my camera filming. And, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's beautiful moments, uh, where, you know, but there was a lot of moments where you're like, my back hurts, my knees hurt. And we're seeing zero elk, or if we do see them, they're just silent. And, uh, the, we thought the rut would be kicking in and they just were all the bulls were hanging out together. It was just everything you don't want to see elk hunting. And it made no sense for the middle of September. It's like, we were all shaking our heads, you know, and, uh, but you know, there's a moment and you'll see this, uh, eventually, uh, there's a moment in that where I said, I was talking to Corey and I was interviewing him. My camera's rolling. I was like, dude, what do you do when the elk just don't talk? And he's like, you know, he got all like sentimental and like, I firmly believe that there is an elk out in the forest that wants to talk and you just got to find him. And I was like, all right. And then it was like, that was like day three and then day five, man, we found that elk and he started talking and he came, came in and Randy just didn't quite have a shot. I don't want to ruin his episode um, for him, but you know, you'll see it pan out. It's awesome. It's cool to see. I mean, it was the interaction with elk hunting alone. It, it, I get, I, you know, it was like, cool. I don't have a lot of history to elk hunting at all. And, um, but seeing, them go face you know 20 yards you know um at one point Corey called a bull in about maybe eight ten yards from me and the dude that that bull was gonna run me over if he didn't cow call it right before it it uh and i got footage man i was shooting with the gigantic lens with my red and uh, right in his face and um i could pull up a photo on my phone but it probably looked like crap on this but um yeah it's it's uh yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I think the interaction with elk and this whole project, um, just like learning like their language and learning like what how personal that is. Well, it reminds me of duck hunting in a way, but man, instead you got an eight hundred pound animal with weapons on his head and he might kill you, you know, because yeah. he's he's he thinks you're another bull and and he's like, I mean, it's just crazy. These animals are best friends, like, and then like twenty minutes later they want to kill each other and like screw their girlfriends you know it's like i don't get it. so um yeah anyway maybe that was appropriate but it's just what's happening you're, 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 you know you're in good company on making inappropriate jokes for sure on this podcast a lot of profanity and so yeah. um dude that's that's so awesome i mean yeah you went from duck hunting and then you went elk hunting this season basically with two of the biggest elk hunting legends that there are, that there are yeah. yeah that's yeah. rad man like it's, yeah you might have not been the one carrying the bow but yeah you're hunting with those guys i feel like yeah. i mean you're oh, absolutely you're, it you become 
and, and it's for me like it's uh the camera is yeah it's weird how it's become like a lot of my duck hunting these days is with a camera this morning i, I was duck hunting and and uh I, sh- I shot five ducks but i also shot like a couple thousand photos you know because it's just i don't know there's just something about capturing every hunt i feel like at this point that i'm on i want to capture something of it you know and, and keep telling stories just you know if it's through instagram or um or official projects with my clients you know um but yeah it's i mean it's been crazy to me the people that i've gotten to meet through hunting and capturing this this media i mean last season i got to meet, meet uh jim Ronquest, Ronquest, you know and uh you know I, I hunted with him for a morning and um he was part of our launch film for sickest new pattern and um just an awesome guy and like just love i love meeting guys that have or have a big reputation but when you get you sit down with them you're like wow these, these are guys are just the reason they do is because they're real and they're passionate yeah. and they're just doing what they love to do and um and it draws people to them and and then they happen to have cameras around you know and so um it's an honor, man. I mean, I got, I was actually in, I'm not sure what city you guys are in, but uh, I was over, um, I got to hang out with Will Primos for, for three days. And we did a bunch of filming and did kind of heard his side of the story with elk calling and took him, took me around, made me some hickory coffee and, you know, uh, just awesome dude, man. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I gave him, gave him one of my five panel hats and texted me at like three in the morning wearing it and just looking like a total goofball. I'm like, <laughs> That hat is not you at all, and uh, and it's, it's hilarious. But you know, I love it how real guys like these are. I mean, they they deserve the reputation that they have. But it's something cool about it, I think when you got these guys like Randy Newberg and uh, Jimbo and, and Will Primos and I mean Corey. And, um, I mean these they're just real people that are, are doing. They're living out their passion in a way that's tangible for other people to, to kind of identify with you know especially right. hunters i mean hunters in general are super passionate people i mean i think that's why you see so much excitement over films over i mean yeah it's just different it's beyond uh um i don't know i mean i think like maybe surfing might be the next closest thing i i mean that i see out here i mean surfing's very much a lifestyle right. and uh and hunting is a lifestyle uh but there's other sports that you kind of start losing the lifestyle aspect and it's just an event, you know? Right. And, uh, and so I think when you start to tap in with whatever your occupation is, when you start to really tap in the passion of your lifestyle, um, you're, you're starting to get the experience. Like when you say to yourself, like, man, I, c- I could do this forever. It's like, maybe you should. And, uh, maybe you've like <laughs> hit the mark and say, that's what I need to keep focus- focusing on at some point in my life, you know? And uh, so for, for me, it's filming, capturing this hunt. Like I'm a hunter in my core, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I'm learning to be more of a a bow hunter and more of a a big game hunter. Um, and, uh, but I think that the camera is my, it's my career. It's what I do for a living. So, um, I just kind of brought them together and like, you know, where in the past our, our company does quite a bit. Of, we're pretty diverse. We have a little bit of everything going on. And, and um, it's over the years as the outdoor branch has grown, um, you know, that's all I focus on for the maybe 80 percent of the time is, is that work. Mm-hmm. And uh, eventually it will be 100 percent. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's cool. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I feel really thankful. I think I think if I just summed it up. I feel super thankful to be able to tell these stories for guys like you and get to meet people um, that I've looked up to over the years and looked, seen on TV or, you know, and, and I, then I'm like, wow, I'm just hiking mountains with these guys. We're, we're both getting our butt kicked together. Like, this is awesome, you know? And, and, uh, and I think these hunts, you know, like you say, you feel like a part of it. I mean, I, absolutely. I mean, when I'm filming something, it's like, I feel like I'm, I'm hunting in that moment. I'm capturing that moment. I'm a part of the hunt. And I mean, with the elk project that we're working on, um, that'll be coming out this next year, um, you know, I, I tried to make a point on every elk that was harvested and killed. I, I packed meat out, you know, and I think the worst one was, uh, in New Mexico, Corey ended up, uh, making an amazing spot, like a four hour spot in stock on this bedded bull and, uh, got, got within about 18 yards and, and stuck them. And, uh, and we, we were in about four and a half miles, so it wasn't brutal, but 
packing out a uh, a quarter and whatever else he gave me. I don't know. Uh, I was hurting, <laughs> yeah. But it's it feels so good to like feel like I have I have this you know whatever fifty thousand dollar camera plus a back strap and some believe <laughs> me you know and uh, my business partner wouldn't appreciate hearing that but uh, uh, you know I take great great uh, care of our gear but in those moments there was something about getting my hands bloody and dirty and where you really say oh man I, I'm I'm proving that I'm a part of this right now you know and I want to I want to pack meat because it feels right you know I'm hunting like with you guys and and uh and i don't know it's it was great but that's awesome man yeah that's, man. that's really awesome to hear um I'm, I'm pumped to see that i'm i'm a huge fan of Corey jacobson i'm i'm kind of the same way i'm trying to get into elk hunting living yeah. in the living in the south it's kind of a you know tough but the drive. it's yeah. uh we'll make it happen one of these days um uh, so tell me about your season, man. How's your hunting season going so far? Oh, man. Well, you know, uh, to be honest, I've been uh, very preoccupied with the elk project that we've done. So it's uh, been – we finished out the elk hunting, and it's been all bow hunting. And so that was most, mostly all of September, and then uh, October came around. Our season actually opens in October here, and um, I didn't – I didn't get after the opener. I was, uh, I think I was in Colorado or something filming one of these, uh, one of the elk legends, you know, kind of getting some backstory on elk, elk calling. And so, um, uh, but I, I did, I have started getting out in November and I mean, it's dang, it's warm out here right now. And so there's just not, you're shooting a lot of local birds. Um, you know, I've shot a handful of ducks at this point, but, um, I absolutely blew it on a, flock of honkers recently and they've been haunting me a bit uh but uh this morning was great we got out in a rice blind with a good family friend and uh up in an area called the Sutter Basin and um and just it's just a gorgeous area right next to a closed zone so I was just watching geese just pour in all morning and and uh we didn't see uh uh didn't see a whole lot of uh big birds quite yet but um you know, it's just been too warm, and I think even up north there, uh, you know, once we start getting the first freezes up in Washington, you start seeing birds. So it, every year, it's typically like end of November, uh, middle of December, as you start actually killing birds. Um, okay. But um, but we're going to be taking off on a on a uh, on a big duck trip uh, coming up here, and working on the next uh, waterfowl film for y'all, and uh, that's that's kicking off uh, early December. So, um, we're going to be taking a, taking a trip and, um, and we got an awesome, awesome plan, awesome story, um, ahead of us to capture. I don't want to give too much away quite yet, but, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. And it's with, it's with, uh, uh, my boy Dennis and his, his buddy Billy and, and, uh, I mean, those guys have become like family, you know? And so, um, um the, the Dr. Duck, sorry. Yeah. You yeah. built like a pretty solid uh, relationship with those dudes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're they're just they're just real deal, you know. And uh, that's I, I reached out to them. I felt like such a stalker. Like uh, I don't know, three <laughs> years ago, I I just sent them a Facebook. I commented, you know. I was, I think it was before Facebook messages existed. You know, it's commented. Hey, man, we should we should do something together. I I want to make a film. I I wanted to kind of get into filming someone out of the south you know and just kind of that and he for some reason it was someone i followed and and i just was i guess inspired by his passion like i was like and where he was hunting at the train and you know everything looked just like super raw i was like i want to i want to see what this guy's about i mean he seems like you know at the time i mean he didn't have a following you know it was just a just a a waterfowler you know and it was like i mean i love the dude because he just he does air conditioning and he kills ducks that's all you know that's, that's his awesome. life and, he, and he's just super humble and uh but i think what keeps me wanting to continue to work with him is just that i just you know i there's i meet a lot of passionate duck hunters but he's he combines passion with hard work you know and i think you got some guys that just like oh man i really want to go hunting with you i really want to do this and you're like well how how bad do you really want to go? Because a lot of times duck hunting sucks yeah. and or sometimes you're just freezing or sometimes like, do you really want to drive 10 hours with me to Oregon? Like, is that how bad you want to duck hunt <laughs> or kill birds? Or, 
Or are you just like someone needs to hand you uh, your license on a silver platter uh, with a guaranteed, you know, hunt, you know, kill birds. Rolling. Okay. We hunt in, I mean, we, we went in miles walking through the timber. This branch is getting slapped in the face. His dog couldn't handle it. His dog gave up and just lay down on a stump. And, and then he picked his dog up, put it on his shoulders and walked his dog out through the timber. And I mean, we were that deep, you know, and it was like, see, this guy is just, I don't know, makes my job easy. Yeah. You know, to capture the real deal. It's like, you're, you're doing it, man. I don't have to set up anything for you. And so, I don't know, we become good friends and, and uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. So we got a, we got one more film and who knows how many more we'll do together. But, um, you know, we're, we're excited to get after it this, uh, this winter. So it'll be fun. It'll, it'll be out next year, you know, and we'll probably start linking out some content for it, you know, early on. And, uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's good. We'll, I'm excited for that. That'll be, that'll be kind of a kickoff of my season because it's been just so warm and not really, uh, too appealing yet for me to, to get go after it, you know, at least, in, at least in California, yeah. but we don't even yeah. have water, man. Like That's we're, not here. we're yeah. struggling, dude. Oh, wow. it's supposed to be raining today. I don't think it did. Yeah. And, uh, oh, oh. it's just, man. it's going to be, it's going to be a struggle come Friday, but you know, it's like you just put the work in, like you said, and you grind it out and yeah. try to get away from the other guys that are hunting on what little water that there there is and yeah, yeah. And see what we can make happen. But yeah. um I'm looking forward to seeing that dude and Yeah. When you were talking yeah. about when you were talking about like the work that Dr. Duck puts puts in and does guys, um, Caleb and I were talking about um, somebody else's content, some professional content. And, okay. and, and he, he made the comment like, and it, it was good. It was duck hunting stuff. And he was like, but it just doesn't show how hard it is, you know? Yeah. And like the dry spells and things like that. Do you ever yeah. try to, um, is, is there ever that idea to wrestle with like showing the brutal, like kind of like just that, the grind of scouting and walking through the timber and the fact that he's carrying his dog through, like, do you ever like, yeah. mess around with the ideas of putting that in the film? Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, I think you'll enjoy this, the style we're going after with this, this film coming up is different. It's going to be a kind of a different take on, um, you know the way the, t the typical styles that we're doing it now are, are it's it's got its style and it's you know format I guess for the film and um, so we're changing up that and I think that it's going to give a little bit more room for that kind of uh, for you to re kind of take in those kind of moments in, in our upcoming work but um, you know absolutely I mean I you know one of my favorite big game films is uh, from my friend uh, this guy Mather and he did a film for. Uh, uh, this company called Go Hunt, and uh, they do you know they're online. You can check them out, and um, I think it's called Thin to Thin Air. Yeah. And I love the film is because these guys just get their butts kicked so hard, you know, in this film. And and Mather did such a great job of showing, you know, waking up and it's dumping rain, and you're on a mountain, and there's nowhere to get dry or stand up and whatever thaw out. And, uh, you know, one dude has had a knee issue and is, he's just getting beat and, you know, lose a deer. I mean, it was like, oh, your heart just keeps breaking over and over and over. And uh, but that showed that and that Matthew was able to tell that, like, how how real and how hard it is for. And, and I, I read, read some of the comments, you know, on that film. And I was like, it's so super cool. Oh, so many guys were like, oh, my gosh, it's exactly how it is for me. Majority of the time hunting deer you know, getting your butts kicked and hiking and getting hurt or, uh, you know, it's just, it's cool to see that. And so I, I mean, I always think about that film, you know, with showing the, the, you know, how raw it is. I mean, um, yeah, there's so much more. I think that the challenges in a, a, the film that we were trying to make, we are always trying to make it shorter. I feel like, or trying to like, what can we take out? And there's so much more that footage I have, of that whole project we've kicked around potentially putting out a director's cut um later next year when i have a moment which feels like never but uh 
you know, a director's cut that would be a little bit long, a little bit more of the, there's a lot of content in the timber that with Dennis and, and his guys that I thought was just really entertaining and, and uh, interesting and conversations that were had. And so I don't know, you, you may see something like that down the road with it. It all just depends on time for me at this point, you know, and, um, we got, you know, we have quite a few edits in the works right now that, yeah, it's just, you do what you can. And, and we don't, we don't run a big, I mean, some of these creative houses have a lot of people on staff and uh, we run a pretty tight ship. There's about only five of us working this stuff. So, you know, we, and I think it's just my uh, ADD of quality control, wanting to keep everything just tight. And, uh, you know, I'm just, just, you know, guys have told me you need to hire more people and can send people out to do different things. And if it's the right person, awesome. But at this point, I just keep doing, we want to keep everything to keep the quality level continuing to grow. You know, we want to, we want guys to keep coming back and saying, man, this is getting better and better. And this is, uh, we don't want to plateau. We don't want to, we don't want to dip, you know, we want to keep it better and better. And so, um, don't change things up too much, man. I think you've got a winning formula for sure. You know, a style and our look and we'll well that'll that's that's like the blood in the film it's it's going to run through whatever it is i think it's just taking a little bit different shape you know and uh so um again i don't want to get away too much but it's i mean i mean it's nothing new i'm not inventing anything i'm just doing taking things that i've learned over the years and been inspired by and uh you know trying them in different scenarios you know and um but yeah, this this new film is going to be good. I know you guys are going to love it. I mean, we're, we're going to have some epic locations lined up to haunt, and uh, some public, some private. And um, yeah, and I think you know when you first mentioned that, that that's the thing that comes to mind when sometimes you watch certain hunting films and you feel like, yeah, that's really cool, and that's a big buck, or man, you killed a lot of ducks. But there's something you're just you're like, what's missing? And I, and I think sometimes when you, if everything is filmed on a ranch on a private ranch and it's just loaded you know you can lose a little bit of that struggle you know and because i mean we're hunters are struggling and if you can't relate with the struggle at some point in it then um you're gonna lose a majority of hunters and uh, that's the thing i think i like about guys that that like dennis that hunt public land it's that relates to 99% of hunters. I mean, most of us, I didn't grow up hunting private. I, I hunted refuges yeah. and we got in line and we hoped we got drawn, you know? Right. And, uh, and so in my later now, and in, in these years later, you know, got connected with people and people invite me out to their clubs. And it's an honor, you know, like, wow. but I think about all the time, like, man, they, it, wasn't always like this like this was you you would look in you would look into their place and be like oh to hunt there that would be something you know yeah. while you're just like hunting you know 80 yards from some other yahoo and uh you know it's like it you know that's that's the thing that you just i don't ever want to lose that um and i i love it when we do get back into public and my personal hunting is 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 almost 100 percent public right. you know and Cause it's, I don't know, just, I don't mind just sitting out there waiting all day for one shot. You know, it is, um, you know, a lot of hunters will talk about it. You know, there's so much more this, this experiencing out in the wild beyond just killing birds. And I notice it a lot when I'm editing actually, because I realize I don't want, um, a hundred kill shots in my film. I mean, that's to me, you just start to, I mean, there's a, a, a VHS, back in the day that my dad had and it was a goose hunting film and he put it on sometimes and it was around the time when duck commander first started making his stuff and uh so it's super old but dude it all that it is raining canada geese like for 45 minutes and so by the end you're just numb to death <laughs> i don't care if anything dies you know like you're you know whatever i mean you know, whatever anything could be falling out of the sky and you wouldn't even care because you saw so much of it so I think in, in editing these films, I've, when you're out filming it, you're the whole time you're thinking, oh, I need more kill shots or I need to get more action. I need more guns going off. But there's just, you realize, man, there's so many things that I think guys grab a hold of in these films that like, yeah, that's me. Or maybe it's just sitting in line with all the boats and someone's running up on you with their boat. You're like, what are you doing? And that intensity right there, when you can relate with that moment, I think you make a connection. You're like, oh, these are these, pe these are people like me. 
right. when you watch the episodes and TV shows that you're like, here we are in Africa shooting in a pen, you know, and we're going to go shoot this thing today. And you're like, I don't know. You just don't connect. Yeah. You know, you might say, wow, that's a big animal. Right. But then that's it. That's all. Uh, but you have nothing to nothing to relate with with the punter or his struggle or it's just it's just not quite real. And it's um, gone, right? Like you forget about it immediately. And yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's why I was pumped to see you know the stuff that you're putting out because so much mm. of it was like the Duck Commander, and, and you're just shots. you're just yeah. yeah. We did a podcast yeah. with another guy last night, and he's like, if I see a kill shot montage with rock music i'm out in five seconds like yeah. I, i'm just done you know and um yeah. and and yeah thank god that you broke the mold in the duck hunting scene man i feel like you were one of the first people to do it for sure so it's awesome stuff um that's awesome yeah i think like yeah. for, for us like we like our like podcast is basically to kind of introduce like you know, the average guy to duck hunting, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and um so what like when we get emails, it's like I'm I'm killing three birds. How do I kill limits? You know, and it's just yeah. because these guys are out wow. watching a ton of kill shots, you know, from the duck commander yeah. and all these other guys. And it's like that's not reality and it never it, it likely never will be unless you you know, manage yeah. your own land and you build rapport with ducks and they come there year after year. So Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's that you're paying whatever, five thousand, ten thousand dollars for a lease and, and that's great. If you can do that, I mean, power to you. I mean, I know you I know those guys enjoy it too, you know, and, and so no shame in that if you can do it. But there's I, I definitely think like uh I think you you, you gotta just like today, like I, okay, like I talk about my birds I shot today, they're crap. Bro, I shot a teal, I shot three gadwall, and a spooning. And I was stoked on my spooning. I crushed them, you know, and I almost yeah. doubled. I, I, I doubled on birds. spoonies, and, and I wish I did. But it's like, you know, it's, you just learn to, you know, that's, I'm stoked for five ducks and a guy I was with. It was on a, on a, a, a family friend of ours has a real nice club right next to this public area. And he's like, oh, man, we, we could have got so much more. It's just a bad day. I'm like, I'm having a ball. Like, this is awesome. Like, we're watching geese pour into this field next to us. I mean, I'm getting to sit. I'm getting to get out and not work the whole time and just enjoy it and have some coffee and, you know, watch the dog work. I mean, he's got Chesapeake, so that's new. I don't have a Chesapeake, you know, that's different. And it's cool. It's just all these little things. And you just, I don't know. I would just tell those dudes, and man, learn to enjoy the big picture. Stop counting your birds and just whatever you're giving, you're giving. Some days you're gonna you're gonna uh, own it. I mean, man, I we've all put in trips. I've put in road trips that thousands of miles and come home with like a honker and a duck. Yeah. You know, and it's like, is it really worth it? You know, and I'm like, yeah, it does something for my soul, like getting out there, and this the and it brings me back when I had those those seasons where I'm like, wow, you you think to yourself, I'm laying in this field. And yeah, you know, started that wondering, like, what am I doing? I, I could be yeah. do, I could be working now, and I'm, am I wasting my time? Like, am I getting just working my ass off? Like, I mean, where I live, plenty of people don't hunt, and they don't understand it. They're like, why? Why do you do that? You could go to this grocery store, you know. And I'm like, it, there's something about an investment when you invest that time and money and energy, and even if it's just one duck, I mean, in, or, or or just an ex, or a, a group of cupped up ducks that you blew it on, you just totally missed. But that that moment's gonna be frozen in your mind, and that's your moment that you will never forget. And it's that in itself is like priceless. So you just yeah. I don't know, those don't leave you, you know. And then you, um, and that's what keeps you coming back. I think the struggle for me is what keeps me wanting to keep trying. I mean, if, I always wonder if I live somewhere where it was limits every time or, you know, geese in your face every time, whatever it is for you, you know, I think you would start to lose, it would start to lose that magic, you know, it start to lose that, the beauty, um, if it was easy, I mean, so. I've got a friend that, that he's got one of the most productive places I've ever seen, um, or heard about, I've never been there, but, yeah. um, you know, pretty much every time he goes, he's, he's guaranteed a limit, right? Wow. Uh, Good 
And for him, you know, it's kind of his dad's thing because his dad grew up hunting public land and, you know, he basically would go out into the middle of the river on public land and in the summer he'd plant for ducks and he'd dig down so that, you know, water collected in this area and then he'd plant it. And, um, and then his dad was able to, you know, buy a piece of land and then basically cultivate it for ducks. But wow. for him, like, for his dad, I feel like it has that special, it's still special to him because he has taken a piece of land that used to have no ducks ever. Wow. And over That's the course awesome. of, like, 15 years has, has made it to where, you know, you build a report with the ducks that come back year after year wow. and he, he kills ducks. But for him, like, duck hunting is just duck hunting. His thing yeah. is like, you know, going after hogs with a dog and a knife, because that's oh, like so. that's like his thing that he like attaches to that because yeah. it's not easy, it's a struggle, and like just yeah. going out there with him, like just walking in the woods with him, he, like you you can tell that like that is his passion because that's right. the thing that he struggled with. Yeah, you know? that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's, that that was, those guys that do that, man. I don't. That's crazy. I I mean it's. That's something else. I mean, uh, yeah, I've met some dudes that they get after that, and it's dude, it's gnarly. I uh, hats off to those dudes. On that. <laughs> I, I don't want to try that. That's not me at all. But uh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just, that's cool. I mean, it's it's in all of our hunting. I mean, I don't I don't at all want to talk talk down upon the private land thing. It's like you can't just hang your hat on one thing and say this. I'm public public only. Or I'm private. Only, you know, whatever. I mean, it, we're so prone to do that and identify with one thing or one stupid stuff, like even what camo or whatever you wear. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, it just I think every hunter understands the struggle to one degree or another. And um, and we love it, man. And we're weird like that. You know, we just love that uh, the opportunity to get engaged with wildlife and harvest our own meat and it's not just that i mean i love to pull the trigger i'm not like out there thinking i'm doing a good thing for conservation yeah. i mean i am <laughs> right. no doubt but i love i love killing animals and but at the same time i love beautiful sunrise you know and i want to take a picture of that and uh so you know label me however you want i, I don't really give a rip but it's it's there's there's so many so many little things with that all hunters i think um can grab a hold of and we, we come together at one point and you can sit at a table. I mean, I'll sit in a table with Will Primos and some of these guys that just, I don't know, super accomplished businessmen and have created uh, amazing businesses and are, I've earned it. The place where they own these lands now and harvest these huge white tailed deer. And, and I was sitting there and thinking, and at the moment um, we were waiting on some um, checks to go through or whatever and my business partner's sitting there too, and he's not a hunter at all. And we were thinking to ourselves, like, is this, you know, he's like, dude, can you believe we're here? Like, we have nothing in common with these guys. He's like, we are completely broke right now. And these guys have everything they'd ever need. But at, at the end of the day, I mean, we're not anymore, thank God. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's like we have, the, we're, we, we're, we have this bond with these guys. We're the same even though our lives can be completely different and we're from California and they're from Louis or Mississippi. Yeah. I don't know. I just love it. I love that hunting brings together the most opposite types of people because it's just, it's a passion that runs deep in our blood that we don't, maybe we don't even understand completely. Yeah. You know, when we try to explain to someone, you can't, you know, yeah. cause we're still, we're still figuring it out. We just know it's something real that's getting us out there, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, You're but right. anyway, I'll babble too much no, no, no. You're, you're you're so on man it's like there's this level of respect and like there's all these divisions in hunting you know and sometimes like and i have a tendency to do this like i have a tendency to want to like hate on texas high fence hunters or something like, yeah you know right. and i go out of my way to not like associate really not well just I, I go out of my way to not make negative comments or anything like that i'm not a i'm not like an internet troll i'm not gonna hate on people but you know i have like a knee-jerk reaction to want to do that or i have a knee-jerk reaction to like want to uh my buddy's like he is like really into like the long distance shooting thing and he wants to like shoot elk and like that to me is like repulsive but yeah it's like it's a <laughs> 
at the end of the day, like we have to, we do have to like kind of, there is this like baseline of respect that we're all hunters and, and we can at the end of the day, sit down at the table and drink a beer together, talk shit and have a good time, yeah. you know, and, and have like a common understanding. And I'm having a ton of fun talking to you and you're in California and yeah. we're, I'm in Tennessee right now. Or yeah. It's just, we do see, we do see the uh, division on like the lease land versus the public land thing a lot. Yeah. And we do both. We're, we definitely are lucky in the sense that neither of us are married. We don't have kids. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we can spend our money on leasing land. Right. Maybe financially irresponsible for, for us at this point <laughs> in life. But, <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but, Not but, at all. But at the same time, we love getting out and hunting public land. And, and we, yeah. do, we do it all the time. I do a lot of public land hunting. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I think we're kind of at like a point too where like, you know, as hunters, you can't, you shouldn't draw the distinction because we're kind of all in this boat together, right? Absolutely. And there's a, there's a lot of people that don't approve of our lifestyle and like yes. a more of a positive me message you can broadcast to those people and right. cast our, our lifestyle in another act in a, in a positive light versus yeah. argumentative or you know, just a montage of kill shots that that's the only thing these people see uh -huh. um, is better for us as a community, you know, if, absolutely. You know if the message is positive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you can, you can disagree with high fence and that's okay. It's okay if you don't like high fence, but I think it's cool if you can say, man, I got a buddy and he loves it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm stoked that you love it. I'll yeah. never do it. Yeah. yeah. I can't do it for one. And, uh, you know, but it's just not, it's just not me and that's okay. I mean, I think that's where it has to be. It's like, you know, it's not that you disagree with it. You don't understand it. It's not your yeah. thing. It's not what you're, you're drawn to. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that dude, he's, he got stoked. He got a moment where he was just shaking or, right. you know, sweating and he can't, you know, here's his animal coming up on him and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you got got to give it to them. Like that's exciting, and and um, and hey, you know, it's better than going to the grocery store, you know, yeah, and sure. uh, just buying something off there where you don't know where it came from. At least he knows where it came from, yeah. and then, you know, that's yeah. awesome in itself. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we definitely, I agree. We as hunters, we just like we need each other, and it just it's bullshit when guys just start picking each other apart and camping up on if it's a, a brand recognition or logos or, or, uh, I don't know. There's just so many things that we like to pick, identify with. And it's just in our nature to want to say, this is who I am. Right. And, uh, and you list all the whatever camos or brands that you are sponsored by. Or, and, uh, you know, it's just so good to just step back and say, man, I'm glad you like to hunt that way. Awesome. I'm going to hunt this way and, and maybe we'll meet in the middle someday, you know? And, uh, you know, and I just, it's been, and I'm learning, I think I'm, I'm kind of learning about these different worlds with elk hunting. And so I spent a season bow hunting, you know, so I've never been a part, well, to a degree, I was a part of a rifle hunt, uh, but, uh, most of it was bow and, but the guys that I was bow hunting with, they weren't against rifles. They just loved the bow hunt. Right. And, and uh, they're taking their kids rifle hunting later, you know. And so, I mean, it's it's cool. I mean, you got to – I think we just got to step back and realize, man, we're all human. And we all just love this. And we're just doing the best we can with what we got and what we're working with. And someday, man, you guys might own that mm -hmm. a massive ranch. And you get the opportunity to bring in someone that doesn't own it. And yeah, yeah. that's me. that was me today. I was hunting with a guy who owns just – uh, a fair amount of really nice uh, habitat that he's developed just like your friend. And, um, and I'm like, you know, he's like, how old are you? And I was like, Oh, I'm 33. And, he, and I've, he, you know, he's known me for a while and uh, he just forgets how old I am. But, you know, and, you know, and he's like, yeah, you're, you're right in the beginning of your, your adventure with this, you know, someday you're going to be taking someone out to do this and giving them that opportunity to sit in a blind, you know, versus, you know, be a weekend warrior and put in miles and, it's all good, you know, and I think we just, it's good, it's good for hunters to be united and uh, for, definitely for the outsiders, but I'd say more so for the insiders. For us, it's good for us to work together and, 
Um, end of the day, someone's like, oh, I don't agree with her. I, I really don't give an F. I you know. I'm just like, I took, I'm sorry. You know, yeah. it's, it's what I grew up with and I'm not just going to just write that off as my only reasons. Like I have good reasons for hunting. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not just taking, spending my time trying to convince everyone it's okay. And it's good for the world. If they're really that concerned about it, they can do their own homework and find out that it is. Right. And I don't think I need to baby them and teach them that it is. Um, I appreciate the guys that do spend time on podcasts and explain and justify it. It's cool. I, I get a lot out of that stuff. But uh, I think it's good for us to think more about the community of hunters and ourselves and how are we treating each other, you know? How are we building up the hunters in general? And that's that's cool when we can serve each other in that way and unite and not let a state or a brand or a style uh divide because it's just this is so petty <laughs> it's just yeah, so it really is. goes i mean companies come and go right yeah. instagram will probably come and go right. if we think about it. and and so after that after you're done chasing instagram fame what that one uh, if you're defined by that and that goes away then what do you got nothing you're gonna feel kind of weird you know <laughs> but if you were spent your time if you spent your time getting to know people and actually developing real relationships and and learning something, I mean, that's going to stick with you all your life, you know? And, and so, yeah, uh, um, I probably got to get going here pretty soon. I think my, uh, my wife and I have a newborn. I got a four month old, oh, really? you know, that's a little, that's congrats, awesome. Congrats, so, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you. He's the man. I can't wait to get him out in the field, but, uh, he has no choice. He's going to love it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, but, dude, um, um, thanks for hanging out with us, man. You're uh, you're a super laid back, cool dude, and it was, it was hey. fun to chat with you. Um, yeah, I'll, you guys. Uh, I'll throw this up. I know, I know, our listeners will be pumped to hear from you, and um, I, I'm just uh, I really appreciate your time, man. And go spend time with your family. That's what this is. This uh, this holiday is all about, yeah. right? So, yeah. Yeah. um. Thanks for hanging out. Maybe one day we can catch up again and, and kind of chat Absolutely. again. That sounds great. Let's do it. Let's plan on it. All right. Well, right. Hey, really great to meet you guys. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Thanks. Thanks, right man. On. Awesome. See you guys later. Have a Thanksgiving, man.